All right, folks, this is the Iceman and the Iceman's All Request Show. We have a special guest on the line right now. He is the front man for Jethro Tull. It's Mr. Ian Anderson. Hello. Ian, are you there? Yes, I'm here. I want to thank you for joining us here at Duck Radio this fine afternoon. My number one question to you right now is, I find that Jethro Tull has started in 1967. Why does a band who has been around so long, how does it stay around so long? Well, I suppose because we, um, we have a loyal following of people from years ago and being a band that doesn't just only go out and play the greatest hits you know new projects uh, like the current one the thing is a brick sequel which is uh, i suppose um it's something that brings us to the attention of younger fans as well at least in some countries so yes lo- lots of uh, reasons but it's the support of the audience they're the ones who keep us going as a matter of fact thick of a brick 2 is the sequel to thick of a brick which was released in 1972 with the sequel being released just recently in the start of April. You have a tour that is ongoing. You just got finished in the United Kingdom, correct? Yeah, we just finished that yesterday. And you're moving on to Germany on the 17th of May. Correct. Are you currently in the United Kingdom, Europe right now? Yes, I am. And we can go through my rather natty wardrobe and my uh, preference for coffee. And we can be uh, we can be doing all sorts of things. But right now, someone's trying to buzz me on the other line, which isn't a great help if we're doing radio. <laughs> That's and quite all Right. Just ignore it. Okay, it's gone away. So, yes, it's uh, it's uh, the end of a tour, start of a new one, and I'm back in the UK waiting to uh, load up uh, another van in a couple of days' time to send all the equipment off to Germany. Now, you actually have an Ohio date here in November, November 4th, at the Akron Civic Theater. Do you en- right. Do you enjoy coming to Ohio? Well, I enjoy really going anywhere where there's an interesting offer and a place to play. We, in fact, also play in Newark in Ohio the day after on the 5th. So we have two dates in Ohio, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, you know, I enjoy playing everywhere, but America, North America is a big place. So by the time we've uh, got around even a quarter of it, our time is up and we have to come home. With all these years in the business, 50 years for you, because you started in 1962, is there one place that you haven't played already that you would like to play, or have you played everywhere? Well, I'm sure we haven't played everywhere. I mean, I've played in a few places in Russia, but I guess I would like the opportunity to visit some other cities in Russia. The problem is transportation, because I'm not very comfortable. I don't enjoy flying, and a lot of the flights within Russia are a bit scary. Traveling by train takes too long. Traveling by road is absolutely out of the question. So being such a huge uh, country to play in, it's not an easy one for transportation. So, you know, we've played, I guess, three or four different cities in Russia, but that's it. And in terms of playing in Latin America, lots of parts of the various countries I haven't played in before, but again, transportation is very often the issue. So uh, we're governed really by the practicalities of travel and airlines that are safe to fly and will allow us to uh, check in our instruments and our belongings. Again, there are issues there in international travel that become more and more restrictive for musicians. So, um, yeah, lots of places I'd love to go, but, you know, we have to be asked. We have to be invited. You know, we don't just decide we're going to go there and play a concert. We need to have promoters, record companies, agents, people who make it all happen. And uh, ultimately, it depends on there being an audience who's willing to buy tickets to see us play. So no point in in my planning to go to Uzbekistan, because frankly, I don't think anybody would be coming out to the concert. I, I'm sure you got fans everywhere. They uh, always seem well, to come out of the woodwork when uh, Jethro Tull or anybody seems to play. Well, so. they, <laughs> I could be confounded, and maybe there are some fans in Uzbekistan, but um, if, uh, if all three of them should uh, phone into your radio station, then uh, I would be surprised. Going back to Thick of a Brick 2, what made you decide to record the sequel after so many years? Well, having said for 30 eight years at least that I would never do such a thing. The thing that changed my mind was the fact that I had a plan. Suddenly I, I had a way to make an album that was set in 2012 that uh, would be a sequel but a giant leap forward 40 years to look at how life is today and how life might have become for the, uh, the little guy Gerald Bostock, the fictitious child poet who supposedly wrote the lyrics on The, the Gazebrick in 1972. What might he be doing today? And so that was the uh, basis for a, a sudden you 
eureka moment. Oh, I have something I can actually base this on, something that makes sense and allows me to make an album that is not merely a, a nostalgic return to uh, some time 40 years before. So where do you get your inspiration for all your music? Where do you write, produce all your music? Like the bedroom, shower, bathroom, whatever it may be, on the road. Where do you produce all your music? Well, all of those things. I very often wake up in the middle of the night with some idea for some lyrics in my mind and I jump out of bed, write it down, go back to sleep again and see what I've got when I wake up in the morning. Was it any good after all? And sometimes I'm sitting down with a very deliberate three or four hours ahead of me of, of actually trying to be creative and write some music. Sometimes it's just a, a moment in a dressing room somewhere. Sometimes it's uh, you know just thinking of a tune as I'm walking down a busy street in the middle of a town somewhere. It, it happens at all times and all places, but like a fragile little butterfly, you pluck it out of the air, but you're careful not to crush its wings. Um, so you've got to treat it gently and see if it's still alive and well by the time you get back into a, a more convenient place like the rehearsal room or the recording studio. Through all these years of Jethro Tull, is there one memorable moment in your career that stands out? Memorable for all sorts of reasons, sometimes not pleasant reasons. I remember some, some occasions because they were um, calamitous in one way or another. It's not a particularly fond memory, but they are things I don't try and erase from my mind either. So, yeah, I, I don't really have any single standout moments. That's a bit like having a, what's my favorite cat? You know, I've, I've had lots of cats in my life, and I would hate to think one was a favorite over all the others. Just as I have two children and two grandchildren, it's hard for me to pick a favorite out of those either. Well, what is left for Jethro Tull? What current projects or upcoming projects do you have planned in the future? Uh, well, I have lots of, well, not lots. I have three projects currently in an early planning stage. But uh, they are, when you say what's upcoming for Jethro Tull, if we're talking about the Jethro Tull brand, there is nothing on the horizon because most of the time I'm doing concerts under my own name during increasingly so in the last 10 years so it gives me a little more flexibility when I do tours as Ian Anderson I'm playing with pretty much the same group of musicians who play in the Jethro Tull concerts but the difference is really repertoire I think if I'm just going out to play the well-worn classic music then you know we may decide to call it Jethro Tull but if it's more of a specific kind of musical project that is perhaps you know with a symphony orchestra or a string quartet or acoustic tour or a special project tour like the Thick as a Brick live tours then I think it's easier for me to refer to that as Ian Anderson because however you cut it you know it's all my music whether it's called Jethro Tull or Ian Anderson I'm the guy who wrote the stuff and did the arrangements and was the record producer and, and uh, so uh, yeah it's kind of my music and there have been 28 different members in Jethro Tull over the years and there is always the danger that when we call it Jethro Tull people have expectations of a particular group of musicians and of course they have come and gone over the years for various reasons and certainly when it comes to Thick as a Brick the guys who played on the original album it would be completely unthinkable to try to reassemble that band in 2012. So if your fans want to get in touch with you get in contact with you how may they do so? Well, they can do that through our website, either jethrotel.com, iananderson.com, takes you to the same place. And they can send an email there, or they can just wave a large placard outside my dressing room window and maybe I'll notice it. But, you know, do fans really want to get in touch with us? Um, a dangerous thing to do. I think most people would find it a bit disappointing because I'm not really the rock and roll icon that they might expect. I'm a little old balding guy who rather reclusive and doesn't really enjoy talking to people and I'm sure I'd be a deep disappointment to the majority of fans who might anticipate a, a racy evening over a few beers and some lap dancing girls. Frankly, that's not going to happen, especially if my wife is around. I want to thank you again, Mr. Ian Anderson, for joining us. Have fun on your Thick of a Brick tour and enjoy your time in Germany and we're definitely looking forward to you here in Ohio in November. Good. Well, we will also have some fun on stage because it is a very enjoyable concert to do. And I've been having a great time during the last month and uh, looking forward to the rest of the year. So we'll see you soon when it's your turn. All right. Thank you very Brilliant. much. Brilliant. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All righty, folks. Once again, that was Mr. Ian Anderson of Jethro Tull. And he was here to promote his Thick of a Brick plus his Th Thick of a Brick tour number two, I guess, that was the sequel to Thick of a Brick from 1972. They are coming to Akron Civic Center on November 4th, 2012. Go to akroncivic.com for more information.